Welcome to Buffy Summaries. See what I did there? A channel devoted to all things Buffy and Angel. So come with me now, gentle viewers, as we dive in to a list of the top 10 big bads. For this list, I've tried to take into account not only their popularity, but also their impact on the characters or on the show in general. And of course, my own personal preference. Number 10, Adam. Originally, Maggie Walsh was intended to be the main big bad for season four, with Adam as her right hand. But the actress playing Maggie, Lindsay Krause, had to leave the show leaving it to Adam to take center stage. Honestly, I'm not really a fan of Adam, but as the official big bad for this season, he deserved a place on the list. I mean, yeah, okay, he's very strong and at times a bit creepy, but with no humor or a real heart of any kind, Mommy. it's hard for me to find anything to attach to. Although his presence did cause the Scoobies to do the spell that not only made for an awesome final fight, Mommy. it also brought forth the first Slayer and their wild dreams in Restless. Oh, and he does kill Forrest, so we can at least be grateful to him for that. Mommy. Number nine, kind of big bad Caleb. Played perfectly by Whedon vs. actor Nathan Fillion, Caleb only has a handful of episodes at the end of season seven, but he leaves quite an impression, especially on poor Xander's face. You're the one who sees everything, aren't you? Well, let's see what we can do about that. He's a preacher and an agent of the first, who he merges with to gain supernatural strength. The Slayer, the strongest, the fastest, the most aflame, with that most precious invention of all mankind, the notion of goodness. The Slayer must indeed be powerful. <coughs> So, what else you got? He's also a misogynistic serial killer who clearly has fun killing young girls and both physically and mentally torturing Buffy. As amazing as he was to watch, it was a relief when she finally defeated him by chopping the bastard in half. He had to split. Number eight, the trio. The trio are the lesser of three big bads in season six consisting of Warren, Jonathan, and Tucker's brother, Andrew. You remember Andrew. He summoned flying monkeys to attack the school play? That was cool, that was kinda cool. Was <laughs> Everyone was like, run, Juliet! <laughs> <laughs> no? Well, we remember Jonathan from his several previous appearances and Warren's robot-making skills from season five. They agree to team up and take over Sunnydale and start off slow with some weird pranks on Buffy that actually causes some funny moments. But it gets dark very quickly when Warren kills his ex-girlfriend that they essentially all intended to rape. It continues to sink lower and lower with them making Buffy believe that she killed Katrina and is really in a mental institution and eventually Warren also trying to shoot Buffy and accidentally killing Tara. <laughs> Think again. Your shirt. Tara? Of course, this creates another season six big bad yet to be discussed. Number seven, The Master. The Master is the first official big bad of the whole show, although the term completely originates in season two. Soon what, Giles? You never held out on me until the big bad thing in the dark became my ex, honey. The Master is imprisoned by a mystical barrier, which he wants to pass through to walk the Earth again, in the process opening the Hellmouth so that all the other demons inside can join him. The Master was visually and in other ways at times one of the cheesier villains, but he did have some excellently witty quips. Hold on. You've got something in your eye. And if it weren't for him turning Dala, we wouldn't have Angel, Drusilla, or Spike. He also made room for the Slayers that arrived following Buffy's death in Prophecy Girl. So, even though he was indirectly responsible for the annoying one, all in all, not a terrible start to the big bad trope. My time has come, glory! Glory! 
What do you think? 5.1? Number 6. Glory. Season 5 is a favourite for many Buffy fans, and Brainsucker Glory is likely at least part of the reason why. Also known as the Beast, she proves herself to be one of Buffy's craziest. And it's typical! It's typical, it's typical. The homeborn of meat sack comes complete with stinking bile, sweat and protein. Yes, I said humans! Not now, mommy's talking, wriggling, piling, prowling, crawling. And toughest fights very early on. One of three gods who ruled over her home dimension, she was banished to Earth by the others who rallied against her. She's after the key to get back there, which turns out to be Buffy's mysterious little sister Dawn. And Glory's willing to bring literal hell on Earth to achieve this. She shares her body with a human counterpart, Ben. Ben! Glory! He's a doctor, she's the beast. Two entirely separate entities sharing one body. It's like a bloody sitcom. What the hell is that, and why is its hair that colour? She has a variety of freaky followers, and an army of medieval knight-type dudes trying to stop her. As we all know, it's the gang that ultimately succeeds, but not without a heartbreaking price. Number 5. The First Evil The First is the origin of evil, essentially making it responsible for all the darkness in the world. It first appears in Season 3 as the ghost of people Angel's killed to try and convince him to end his life, and it doesn't return until the final season. It somehow seizes on Buffy's resurrection, giving it the chance to return stronger than ever. But it's not because she died. The, the bell just says I was quite clear about that in its enigmatic way. It's, it's because she lives again. With a huge army of uber vamps and bringers by its side. The first makes for an interesting big bad, as it can take the form of any dead person. This includes Spike, which it uses to its full advantage. It also appears as Buffy, Joyce, and a handful of the big bads that came before it. Oh god, she won't understand. She won't understand. <laughs> of course she won't understand, Sparky. I'm beyond her understanding. She's a girl! It's sugar and spice and everything useless unless you're bacon. I'm more than that. More than flesh. More than blood. I'm... You know, I honestly don't think there's a human word fabulous enough for me. Oh, my name will be on everyone's lips. Assuming their lips haven't been torn off. But not just yet. That's all right, though. I can be patient. Everything is well within parameters. She's exactly where I want her to be. And so are you, number 17. You're right where you belong. So what do you think? You get your soul back and everything would be Jim Dandy? Soul's slipperier than a greased weasel. Why do you think I sold mine? <laughs> well, you probably thought that you'd be your own man, and I respect that. But you never you will. will. You'll always be mine. You'll always be in the dark with me. Singing our little songs. You like our little songs, don't you? You've always liked them. Right from the beginning. And that's where we're going. Right back to the beginning. Not the bang. Not the word the true beginning. The next few months are going to be quite a ride. And I think we're all going to learn something about ourselves in the process. You'll learn you're a pathetic schmuck. If it hasn't sunk in already. Look at you. Trying to do what's right. Just like her. You still don't get it. It's not about right. Not about wrong. It's about power. 